Hello there. Today we'll be doing number 83 of 150. Uh, this is surrounded regions. Uh, in this particular problem, uh, we're looking at a uh, matrix uh, and everything that is uh, surrounded by x's uh, would be turned into, uh, well, if a group of uh, O's is surrounded by x's, we can make the, we have to change all of those to x's and everything that is a O, um, don't do anything about it. Uh, that's not surrounded. So what can we do with DFS and the border and what we've learned from the Pacific and the Atlantic Ocean? Problem uh, is that um, you see these borders. These borders suggest that um, well they cannot be um, this is it cannot be surrounded. So uh, everything that's connected to it, uh, a, a anything to it's a O and that's connected to any other O's uh, that that it cannot be surrounded. But if it's not connected, that means it can be surrounded. And so that means. Um, if we just switch swap all of these to a different variable, let's say t, uh, something temporary, anything else other than an o, um, let's save that as our uh, temp variable, um, temp uh, var is equal to let's say t, um, and uh, let's say yeah, and then we we can using that piece of information. Uh, we could convert all those temp bars uh, and uh, convert all the O's that have not been converted to uh, X's and convert the temp bars back into our X's. And that uh, will solve our problem. Um, hopefully that explanation was clear enough. Um, and uh, I'll re-explain what we've learned uh, after, after the problem. So uh, here we go again. Uh, rows and columns is equal to length of board and the length of board of the first row. So um, what we're going to do is uh, for R in range rows, so basically the top row and the bottom row, um, we're going to make sure that uh, DFS of the, I mean, the, the first column and the second column, so first column and the last column, uh, minus one, take care of those. And for C in range, rows, columns, and uh, we're going to take care of um, the columns now. So row is going to be 0, and the column is going to be uh, C, and DFS, the rows, minus 1, and uh, C. That's it. And so with that, uh, we're going to convert everything uh, using DFS into our uh, temporary variables. So then for R in uh, range rows, and for C in range columns. So we're gonna do everything now. So that means uh, we're gonna check every item and make sure if it is a, um, if board of uh, R and C is equal equal to a row and column. Uh, usually I like to see this as I and J, uh, but let's try how R and C feels and then we'll go back or for board. Uh, something different I'm trying. Um, okay, so we're going to try uh, set that equal to, if it's equal to uh, O, um, then we're going to set it to um, in X. We don't want to set anything else to next. Let's just not uh, do that because that makes no sense. Uh, if we set a T or an X to an X, just waste the time. So uh, set that to an X. Once we're done with that, uh, we can copy this piece of code, uh, and but this time um, we can use our temp bar. And send it back to uh, send it back to an, uh, our old var. Um, something that we can see is that x's and o's. Anyways, um, I think the temp var part makes a little bit more sense, and the x's and o's um, is is just given in the problem. So I think that's all we need to store. I don't think we should store the x variable and the y, uh, zero o variable. It makes too much uh, like gar uh, information that detracts away from our reading of the code. Okay, so DFS. And uh, we're going to do a rows and columns. This is very interesting, using the same variable for rows and columns. Uh, it makes things a little bit like it can makes it gives it conformity um but at the same time it takes away from the uniqueness of r and c rows and columns mm, yeah it does but uh we'll, we'll we'll have to evaluate it at the end so now um if r is less than zero uh or 
r is uh, or c is less than zero. So same thing. Make sure it's in inbound. If it's out of bound, it's going to cause a um, error, um, and we don't want that uh, when we uh, look up our item. So if board of r and c is does not equal um, uh, a o, then that means it has been converted, or it's an x, and, and we don't want to do anything with that. Um, then we return. If it is a, uh, that means otherwise it is an uh, it is an o, and it was connected to anything on the border. So what we're going to do now is convert it to uh, the our temp bar. So uh, board r and c is equal to our uh, temp temp bar. Um, oh, oh. Interesting. Yeah, interesting. Um, something interesting I just saw was that temp bar is below DFS. So I don't know how this will work, but let's let's keep testing because uh, we're just learning here, right? So let's test how. Um, how things work and learn something new along the way, right? So we're gonna set it to temp bar, and uh, we're gonna run DFS on um, the four sides that anything that's connected to it, and, and convert all those things that are connected to uh, a, a the, our temp variable. And let's run. Whoa, what is going on? And submit. Okay, it looks good. Um, we have solved this particular problem. We have tried many new things and it worked out. Um, we created some constants. We were able to use those uh, both in our uh, function and in um, our uh, sub-function. We were able to um, look at convert everything for, to the t's and then uh, to our temporary variable and then convert everything that doesn't touch uh, the, the, the places where it could be uh, enclosed. Um, and converted those to x's and converted the the t's back to o's and uh, we're, we were we were good to go. Uh, this was a fantastic problem. We definitely learned a lot here and it was pretty creative if you haven't seen the Pacific and Atlantic Ocean problem which we did previously. And if you enjoyed the video uh, like and subscribe. Uh, if you have any questions please comment below and um, yeah if you want more videos check the link in the description below. Thank you very much and have a good one.